Thank you, Julie. Wonderful. And thank you to all of our uh, worship leaders today. Yes. Um, welcome to guests and visitors. We are so glad that you are here. Uh, regular timers, we're short of bulletins, so let's pass them over. Uh, but Colin will collect them if you have extras. Most of our service is projected on the screen. Uh, you want to keep uh, at least one per household so you can uh, look at the announcements of things that are coming up this week. So um, a warm welcome to everyone, whether you are a member or visitor at Trinity. We are so glad that you are here and able to worship on this Independence Day weekend. And so we pray a safe and happy Independence Day. We pray God's continued blessing on this nation and God's blessings on all who have served and continue to serve in any capacity of our military at home and abroad. And again, thank you, um, Connie and, and Julie and Phil, uh, all of our assistants. Um, with those who have served, if you have served in the military in any capacity, could you please stand as you are able so that we can recognize you? And thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Michael Richter, hello, can you stand up? You made the sermon again this week. Welcome back. You have just served from, um, you've been gone six weeks in Southeast Asia. You're off the grid, as your mama said. So you were doing mission work to the people of that area. Oh, it's good to see your face. I'm so glad that you're back. Visit with this young man about all that he has been up to and how he has shared the good news. So good to see you and welcome back. Yes, thank you. Um, other folks, where were our Colorado trip? First, please stand. I'm, we're just going to do lots of exercise here. Yeah, you just got back yesterday after being gone for a week in Colorado. So visit with these folks to hear about their trip. Thank you. And you guys will be sharing the message in a couple weeks about your trip uh, next week. Next week. Those folks and those who helped with our habitat trip as well. So thanks be to God uh, to his work through you, and we ask God's continued blessing for our junior high group who is heading out this uh, Thursday through Sunday. We will be in Minneapolis, so we ask that you keep us in your prayers. Uh, the flowers this morning are in loving memory of Virginia Pearson White uh, from her family. Um, some other things to announce. July helpers, we still could use a few more if this is your month. Great. If it's not your month, awesome. Sign up anyway. Uh, the sign-up sheets are on the welcome table in the narthex. Space that is needed, helpers that are needed uh, are highlighted, so please stop by there. Some folks to update. Roger Wolden has been hospitalized this past week. He was scheduled to have quadruple bypass surgery, and that surgery was moved around a few times, so I don't know if it happened, but we want to keep Roger in our prayers. Doris Iverson, good to see you. Your um, blood cell count is up, and so your treatments are continuing. Thanks be to God. Deb Gilbertson's blood count is down, so her treatments have paused. Jenna and Gunda, yep, there you are, so continue. Oh, it will stay the same. House arrest. So, yeah, so continue to keep Deb in our prayers. And Pat, you've had some ups and downs, but the biggest down, she's more ups than downs, but I think this is pretty sad. She can't eat chocolate. No. Oh. <laughs> Good to see you. And Faye, I know that you've been a huge support to these ladies and their families. So please keep everyone in our prayers. Is there anybody else that we want to mention in prayer or give updates? No. Okay. Um, as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, all who believe in the true presence of Christ in the wine and wafers are welcome to come forward. We're kneeling today, so please do that as you are able. But if it's more comfortable to stand, please do so. If you'd like to receive the sacrament, please extend your hand and we'll give you a wafer. Um, and then our uh, trays have 
juice in the center ring and wine on all of the other rings. If your diet is gluten-free, please let us know and we will assist you with that. If you would prefer to receive a blessing at the railing, that's great too. Keep your hands folded, please, one on top of the other. And if mobility is a concern, please stay put and our ushers will assist us to come to you. Okay, with that, please stand as you are able as we continue with our confession. We are gathered in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and together we confess. We have not lived as your chosen people. We have not loved as your daughters and sons. We have not walked in the footsteps of others. We have not followed the servant, your son. Sometimes I hate, sometimes I lie, sometimes I waste, sometimes I cheat. Sometimes I am selfish, sometimes I am prejudiced, sometimes I am uncaring, sometimes I am destructive. And we take a moment of silence. Most merciful God, even though we are in bondage to sin, there is hope for freedom, not by our own doing, but because we are chosen by God to receive the gift of forgiveness. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we know this is true. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn. The words will be projected on the screen, but if you'd like to read music, I invite you to take the hymnal, and it's in the back of the hymn on page 461. Most merciful God, let us pray. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who confronts us. With your spirit, accompany us on your life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 10 through 14. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glor glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bodies shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is taken from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 16. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I'm writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as you are able as we hear the reading from St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, your peace will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. 
Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated, and I invite all of the children to please come forward. Oh, I've got props. <laughs> Hi. You ready? Huh? This is going to be great. Good morning. Come on up, have a seat. Welcome. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Happy birthday. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you all. Well, I'm getting ready to go on vacation at the end of the month, but I like to be prepared. So I like to plan ahead. And when I go, I really like to be able to just get away from everything. No worries, no concerns, just simplify and relax. But I'd like to show you some of the things that are in my bag. Do I have a volunteer? Come on over. Can you unzip the bag? All right. Thank you very much. Can I have a, another volunteer? You don't want to see all what all is in here? Well, come on over. <laughs> Open up the bag and take one thing out, please. Okay, what do we have? Toothbrush, toothpaste, dental floss. Very important to floss. Floss, 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 floss. Floss. Capstick, thank you. Do I have another volunteer? Can I have a seat? Come on over, so. Oh, yes. You know what that is? A book, a devotion. I like to do my devotions when I'm gone. Do I have another volunteer? No? Come on over. Both you guys. Go ahead, Creighton. Pull something out. Okay. Does your sister want to pull out the other one? Yeah. Come on over, Nora. What's this? Shoes. Tennis shoes. You know, I like to walk and run. That's good. Yep. Another volunteer? Come on over. What do we have? Go ahead. Grab something. Yep. Flip-flops. Got to chill a little bit. Come on over. Come on. Come on. Okay, what else? Towel. Yep. Yep, got to clean up a little bit. All right, anybody else? Come on. Got a hat in case we're out in the sun. Come on. Come around over here. Come on. Grab something out of there. Yeah. A stuffed animal, because sometimes I get lonely. It's good to have a friend, yeah. I got a hair binder, deck of cards, socks, Gatorade, because I might get thirsty, some shorts, long sleeve shirt, granola bar, camera, and a radio. Does it look like I am going to be able to just relax and get away from everything? Well, God, I kind of have a lot of stuff in there, don't I? Yeah, it might be kind of hard to relax. Well, um, I may have forgotten a few things, but I have quite a bit of stuff. Jesus sent out some of his followers. And when they went, did you hear what he told them to bring? Did he say bring flip-flops? He didn't? No, he said don't bring any sandals. He said... 
bring no purse, no bag, no nothing. And the reason why is because he didn't want his disciples to have all of these things when they told other people because he didn't want them to think that the message was about stuff. He wanted their message to be about him. He didn't want people to get caught up and think, I've got it all, and so it's all dependent upon me. I just need to tell people about Jesus with a deck of dog cards. No, no, he says, tell people about me just about me. So God says, go, and when you tell people about me, that is enough, okay? That's what I'm going to talk more about, how each of us is to go and simply bring Jesus. Okay, will you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending us to tell people about you. Help us as we go. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you very, very much. I can head back to the seat. There we go. Could you clean that up for me? Could you just get all that in there and then put it in the chair? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. When I was in college, as part of my education, I had the opportunity to backpack throughout different parts of Europe one January term. It was an incredible experience, visiting a new city or even country almost every other day. And all that I had with me was everything that would fit in my backpack. And back in the day, it was those metal framed ones. Remember those? Woo! Not very big, but I had a lot in there. It was truly a time for me when I was dependent upon the kindness and hospitality of strangers or lack thereof. It was humbling and truly an eye-opening experience. I would get to a new city and I would have to find lodging and food. Sometimes I would have to exchange currency. I remember even having to struggle sometimes to find a place to go to the bathroom. Some people were gracious and willing to help me with these simple and necessary endeavors. I remember my time in Hamburg, Germany. A retired naval officer and his wife were so kind. They took me in for the afternoon, and I remember they gave me a hot bowl of soup, and I desperately needed something warm and a safe place and some people to help me. They made sure I had my bearings, and they listened to my stories, and they were willing to help me any way that they could. Some people were so kind and welcoming, but that wasn't always the case. I was surprised by some people's reaction where, when I would stop and ask them for directions. I'd get looks of judgment and condemnation. I would be met with sharp tones in languages that I couldn't understand, but they, I always got the gist of their messages. They were simply saying, figure out where to sleep, and get food on your own, you dumb kid. I have no time to be bothered by you. That was hard. I was tired. I was dirty. I was scared at times. And you will never do that. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. Backpacking throughout different parts of Europe was something that I chose to do. But in today's gospel message, as Christ's followers, we're not given the option. Jesus tells his followers quite plainly, go. And as you go, tell others about me. That instruction, not optional. It can be easy to hear this text for today from Luke 10 as one of hospitality. And it is that. But think. Briefly for a moment, when you hear the word hospitality, what comes to mind? Many of us have experienced the Scandinavian culture. Maybe it's our own, maybe not. But I think when we think of hospitality, 
we think of welcoming those who come to us. That's good. That's important to do. But our text for today is different. It talks about hospitality to those of us who are being sent out. And the hospitality is what we receive, how we are treated. Today's text lifts up the mission of the church. Yes, we're to be hospitable to those who come to us. But our kindness, this message of hospitality, is not limited to those who come. This image of how entrenched we are in our vision of hospitality was one that I reflected on from two different conversations this past week. Last week, Chuck Jensvold had offered a prayer to be included with the prayers of the church. We have a little black book where anybody is welcome to write a prayer concern, and we share that during the service. Well, Chuck had written a prayer that included an excerpt from Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. The gist of her prayer was that we are to be welcoming to those around us. But two different members of Trinity said, why did we have that prayer? Did we have some folks who were trying to visit here and they weren't welcomed? And I loved it. It was like, ooh, we are supposed to be warm and welcoming here. And yes, that's a part of it. But I wonder if that same fervor, that same intensity, that same obligation that we have to be hospitable extends to others beyond our walls. Does that make sense? When people come here, it's really easy for us to say, come, sit. Is the temperature okay? Join us for coffee and fellowship afterwards. But do we have that same intensity once we leave this building to extend Christ's hospitality to others that we meet, others that we encounter, those who don't know a Scandinavian descent? Our gospel comes from Luke 10. And Jesus says, don't only welcome those who come, but be hospitable to those outside of the church as well. Jesus says, go. And when you go, be the church outside of any walls. And if you see walls, especially walls of judgment and injustice, break them down with my message of love and hope and welcome for all. As Jesus' followers, those of us here today, we are called to go. And it's not just a select few like the 70 in the text. Granted, yes, there are some who will be called to be missionaries to different parts of the world, like our own Michael Richter. Not all of us will go to Southeast Asia. Some of us will. But regardless if we go across a state line or an ocean, each of us is called to go and tell the good news. I like summer. I like summer in the church because the pace is different. I'm giggling because people say, oh, isn't it nice that you get to slow down? Oh, the church does not slow down. The pace is different. What is great about summer is we get to offer different opportunities to practice our going. Trips like Habitat for Human Humanity, taking senior high kids to Colorado, taking junior high kids to Minneapolis, even Vacation Bible School and the community event of Summer is Better Together, all of these are hands-on opportunities to practice our going. When we offer these things, we come together as community. We study and wrestle with the word of God, and we apply it hands-on. Almost every year when folks come back from these trips, I hear the same message. I never get tired of this message. Newbies come back and say, you know, I never understood why we have to send people away to do work that's needed right here. I never understood it until I was one of the people who went. 
There's just something different that happens when we get out of the safety of Trinity, out of Detroit Lakes, out of Minnesota. There's something different that happens when we go, when we do Christ's work. That's what today's message is all about. It's a simple message, but I guarantee it's not easy. God calls us to go, to be him, to share him with those around us. This weekend in particular, you may have the opportunity to go to different places, but you'll have the opportunity to maybe stay and gather with family and friends. And whether you go away or stay close to home, I want you to do this message. I want you to share Christ. It's really easy because as you get together with people, you can say, hey, what have you done this weekend? And then the, you can say, well, I went to church. So here's your chance to practice. Turn, oh, did I just hear it? Oh, my goodness. Turn to your neighbors and practice this going and telling. <laughs> if you know the person, great. If not, introduce yourself. Handshakes are welcome. Turn to somebody, D. There you go. Pretty easy to do when we're right next to somebody in the pew or reaching in front of us or behind us. This message from Christ is simple, not always easy, but go, tell, share the good news, and as you do, recognize the blessings on the journey. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, Here I Am, Lord. I think it's very fitting. Um, the words will be projected on the screen or, if you prefer, in our hymnal in the back on page 574. <laughs>
please stand as you are able as we have our statement of faith. We believe we are chosen by God, our Creator, to participate in the ongoing work of creation by holding life sacred and being good stewards of God's gracious gifts. We believe we are chosen by Jesus Christ, our Savior, to participate in the ongoing work of spreading the good news of God's saving love and serving others in the name of the Lord. We believe we are chosen by the Holy Spirit, who calls us through the gospel to believe in Jesus Christ, gathers us as a community of believers to worship together and support one another, and enlightens us with the gifts of love, forgiveness, and everlasting life. We believe the Holy Spirit nourishes our growth, preserves us in faith, and keeps us in God's grace forever. Amen. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gentle grower, send your church as laborers into your harvest. Make us joyful in sharing the good news of Jesus and make the harvest plentiful. Hear us, O oh God. Healer of all, we bring before you those in need of our healing presence. Do not be far off, but work your healing in the lives of all in need. We pray today especially for Denny Anderson, Blanche, Doris Iverson, Pat Brissett, Rita Miller, Deb Gilbertson, Michael Richter, Barb Babine, Jerry Moan, Colleen Canope, Michaela Morris, Deb Newman, Diane Hazley, and especially for all our service-connected personnel serving here and abroad. Hear us, O oh Lord. Your mercy is great. We also ask your healing and wholeness for Roger Wolden. We pray for Elise Sperling, niece of Alan Sperling, and Brian and Kim Smith, as she wraps up her one-year mission work with young adults in global mission in Cambodia. We pray for safe travels and blessing as she returns home at the end of July. We also give thanks for a great week for our senior high mission trip participants and ask your blessing upon our junior high participants. We ask for safe travel for family and friends and bring peace to family members that can't be together. We pray for our men and women in blue. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that gift of peace with one another. <laughs> Good morning. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together as we've been taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you in his love, grace, mercy, and truth now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn for today is printed on the back of our bulletin or it will be projected. God bless America. God's people called to grow in faith and action. Yes. Amen. 